Good morning, good afternoon, and or good evening wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Pan Asian Show. I am your host, Jay Cole, and I am joined by my co-host, Anissa. We had two great guests this week, Jasmine Kong and Calvin Tom. We also will be talking about two of our favorite IG profile discoveries this week, three of our favorite IG posts of the week, as well as an exciting video Anissa wants to share. Our first guest is our good friend and my co-host for the Asian All-American Magazine podcast, Jasmine Kong. is all from the other side of the world so for me this, this is, is all new yeah today's conversation is about both of you guys and why we are here today Since Jasmine and I are very close and we've been working on different types of projects anyways I approached her about doing a this podcast it came it, things just come to me man and yeah, you know both happened. of you guys know that if something like something I feel I just go for it there is no mm-hmm. There's no way to, you know, I had a vision. I had a vision Mm -hmm. uh, with the Asian All-American magazine anyways. But then I had a bigger vision uh, about the world and the pan-Asian community. And hence, that's why Mm -hmm. I reached out to you, Anissa. And I think both dynamics of having an experience, the American experience, and obviously you having a very similar experience with your Indonesian roots going into the Netherlands. So there are some similarities. We're ultimately trying to connect with um, the Asian community world, the pan-Asian community. The common ground we have at first is our heritage, of course, I think. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, we are all Asians, Southeast Asians to be exact. Yeah. And yeah, um, we are si- our experiences are quite ki- yeah are quite sim are quite similar because we right. share like the same heritage. So right. I think it begins with there and the same right. stories. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jasmine, you and Anissa are roughly you know around the same age, so yeah. you guys might, you, you guys are going through similar experiences. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Yes. Going through similar experience. We're at a time where we're trying to figure out who we are and what we can do. Um, and so far, you know, I always tell Justin this, but doing these podcasts has really opened my eyes and I'm, I'm sure it's going to open other people's eyes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just having that immigrant experience and coming together, it's very fulfilling. Yes. But also too, we, um, you know, we started these podcasts so that we can have our own representation. Yes. Very our important. own voice. Good because point. Yeah, because a lot of times other people control Asian media. So it's it's special that we, we do it and we share the story the right way and how we want to share it. Yeah. Look it, we are worlds <laughs> apart um, how we come to conclusions to problems, mm. how we find solutions uh-huh. to problems. And I mean, that's why both of you guys are the host of our podcast, the primary host, I should say. And I'm just a supporting cast because um, it's important that the world, in particular, our community, sees to, um, you know, to intelligent, beautiful, and naturally curious women that are just, you know, it's like a wanderlust, you know. You guys are out there trying to Mm -hmm. figure out what life is, Um, in your own way. We're talking about these last few days, uh, there's a hashtag, um, women supporting women, right? We need need men supporting women and it not be a hashtag, but be a concerted effort to do Mm. that. So I feel like with the climate now and everything changing and putting women in more media has been revolutionary and has opened doors and paths for like Anissa and I yeah. Um, to to do this podcast right. and with your help as well. I think men should also change how they see women, yeah. you know, right. um, and value right. and value your women. Kind of a, a little bit of a feminist, um, especially being an athlete. Don't apologize sport. about Don't it. Apologize. Don't apologize about it. You're just apologizing about being a feminist. Don't apologize about it. That's one thing women need to stop doing is apologizing. No, you need to stop apologizing. You. Don't say women, you. 
But yeah, being, a, being a woman in sports, it's it's already hard too because sports isn't seen as a womanly thing. I am sure. Women, women woman support over, women. Mm-hmm. If oh. women support women, they be filling up the the arena. Southeast Asian culture and even Asian, yeah, indigenous Asian people are actually very dark skinned. Right. And to represent um, someone lighter in media is kind of a a lie and not not a tr- you know the truth of what it it really means. But I mean, in general, that's just what co- colorism is, and that's how it affects people. Um, it's an issue that we have to tackle and find solutions for and educate people about. Yeah, yeah and, it tackles people's self esteem. Like I grew up think I grew up thinking that. My mm-hmm. tan skin is is well, is less beautiful than 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 the light skin people I I see on TV. Like it's it really affects young girls' self esteem and confidence. And I, yeah, I think we should we should change that. Like everyone is beautiful. Dark skin women mm-hmm. are also gorgeous, and I and colorism is even when I when you look at Asia, it's the biggest problem in India. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. Most people yeah. are dark skin, and then the, 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 that's the country of fair and lovely. Philippines, uh, Philippines is up there, man. Philippines is up there, dude. Like, look at the Filipino women that win Miss Universe. Mm-hmm. They're very light. I mean, they're, they're very light. 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 Yeah, and you yeah. know what? The funny thing is, like, even dudes, Filipino dudes, they look more Spanish than anything. Now, I know <laughs> Filipinos are a mix of a lot of things, right? But, like, dude, we need like cats, Spanish. like... We need cats looking like me, man. Yes, this was this was fun because Jasmine and I share some similar experiences because I'm just two years older than her. Okay, so we picked out uh, three IG profiles that, uh, or is it three or Only two? Only two. I think two. We, we were a little lazy, so we're doing two. <laughs> <laughs> Where to Bear uh, is a skincare blog. Um, Melissa is uh, someone that Jasmine and I interviewed um, for the Asian All American podcast, and she is such a dope person, Anissa. Mm, and, I love skincare. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> and her, we 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 always talk about aesthetics. Uh huh. And she aesthetic. has aesthetic. Like yeah. I love these natural colors. Yeah, for sure. So I guess her recent. Um, blog is about the Sephora hacks. And she hooks it up with uh, some discounts. Ooh, yeah, so, tips about shopping at Sephora. Right. Again, she, and she also there's a uh, there is other. She has some Trader Joe's stuff and some raw sugar living products, Essie nail uh, polish, yeah. and then she has uh, a, a Best Beauty podcast as well. Click mm-hmm. on there. Her website is Where to Bear, and also that's the same for her IG. This is uh, a referral sent by our homegirl Jasmine Kong, and yeah, obviously right. you see a Jasmine Kong followed by mm-hmm. and uh, Sam Sammy from the UK. She is an eclectic person here, but she's doing shit. Yeah. He's a DJ and an artist. Okay. All right. So this is her website, ma'am. Well, that's a cover page. How dope is that? That's a great cover page right there. Um, I, it looks like this is somewhat like a blog as well, or is it just a picture... Yeah, this is like a mixture of her blog and portfolio. Okay, yeah, this is dope. Sammy, we're going to reach out to you, see if you can um, jump onto our podcast and talk about you. Yeah, it would be the, dope. Yeah, and all the things that you like to get into. If that's her mom, they look like twins, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they look, literally, they, they look like twins. Okay, she's dope, man. She's all around dope person. Yeah, she has two bachelors. Yeah, two bachelors. Uh, let's not forget about that. Yeah, like... Damn. Media and communications and art, fine arts. Damn, she is... 
She's really well read. <laughs> yeah. She's really well read. So our second guest is Coach Calvin Tom. And Coach Calvin is a dear friend of mine and an incredible individual. I can't wait to share his story. Uh, to, to piggyback on that, I think that this uh, whole thing with the COVID is really showing that. You yeah. see a lot more celebrities. You see a lot more af- uh, professional athletes and professional first responders or whatever coming out to help others. Not yeah. not just with the money, but physically out there. Time, you know, yeah. Time, yeah. handing out food, um, doing whatever they do. can, help fundraise and, and everything else. So, um, you know, the advent of the smartphone technology and everything started with the selfies, right? And so pretty soon the selfies turned into self-centered. And I mean, how many people post their their worst times on yeah. Instagram, like you're saying? Everything's yes. all, all beautiful and and um, yes. Yeah, because that's and not real life, man. That's not real life. Well, at least not for us. Yeah, not for us. Right. Not for many. Not, not for, for many. Nine percent. Yeah. I would like to know about what is Coach Kelvin's perspective on how Asian athletes have evolved over time. Please yeah. share us a bit. What is your point? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, it, it's a lot of it. We're not tall enough. We're not strong enough. We're not athletic enough. Um, we're, we're deemed the, the support players and, and never the starters. Um, even as, even as a coach, you yeah, know, you're, how about that? Uh, you know, how many Asian American coaches do you see even in college where we, we still have that stigma of, um, not being looked at seriously. Right. Uh, like, like you were, we were ending with Jeremy Lin, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't get another job in the NBA. So he's playing in China now. After know. winning the NBA title, after yeah. winning the NBA title, that's yeah. crazy to me. We're talking about the Asian um, athlete. You know, there are other sports other than basketball that a lot of Asians participate in and excellent. You know, and I think a lot of the um, a lot of Asian athletes are participating in Asian games, you know, Olympic events, uh, right. the Sea Games. The Sea Games are Southeast Asian yeah, yeah, the games, games, right? I was, I was in Indonesia two years yeah, ago. Right. So those are the platforms in which we can you can represent your country. Like there's a lot mm-hmm. of Asian Americans representing for their motherland from a personal perspective um back in the mid 80s late 80s um the olympics were bringing baseball back into play and um i already stopped playing baseball and i was working at this uh, business and a friend of mine who played baseball with me um he he found me and he said hey you know coach has been trying to find you you know they're looking for american ball players to go over to Europe to teach them how to play baseball because it's becoming an Olympic sport. They yeah. know how to play, but they don't know the technical aspects of the Fundamentals game. Fundamentals and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, when when he said, yeah, they're looking for American ball players to go, this um, white woman who was walking by said, well, why do they want you then? Wow. To me. Right. And my friend who is white, Looked at her funny, like, you know, lady. Do this you know who this guy is? <laughs> Do you know who this guy is? My mom and I are both first generation, so so it was yeah, it was already hard for me to to get to know this country and fit in. But for her especially, because like, yeah, because I was five and I studied Dutch, so it was very easy for me. But my mom was already thirty, and and learning a language is really hard and really hard in that age. But and then she went to this. To, um, she she went to take this course how to to learn Dutch and learn Dutch culture because it's yeah you it's you have to if you don't do if you don't do that you will get kicked off the country so everybody goes there right and that's where she met like a lot of a, a lot of more Asian friends like a lot of people came from Thailand <laughs> Cambodia and right um, maybe also the Philippines but and also a Arabic country so she had a lot of a lot of foreign friends for a long time actually it was hard for her to make friends with Dutch people right because of the language of the culture is all so different and 
Yeah, and if you're still having co- a lot of contact, daily contact with family and friends over there in Indonesia, like, you don't really, you don't really want to fit in here. Especially now with technology, you just open up yeah. Indonesian Facebook, yeah, whatever. <laughs> right, right. Um, so yeah, we Indonesia had our Independence Day last Monday, and then uh, and this is a video to celebrate our the diversity of all our cultures. It's really oh, dope. That's awesome videography. It's really awesome. Like I, like I'm so proud. This, this is awesome, dude. Oh, I can appreciate the cinematography, man. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's great mix of, um, <laughs> great mix of, uh, yeah, this is a mixture of our tradition of cult- and yeah, of our cult- 34th prophets. Yeah, dude, that's so dope. Wow, this is, oh, my, this is, this is like performing arts, dude. Yeah. This is so dope, man. Yeah, I think this, if I'm for <laughs> the guy is a DJ. So. <laughs> this is like the Indonesian Aoki, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Like visuals, oh my God. Production point. Come on, dog. What are we now, Anissa? We are... Uh, we are now at uh, IG... At, at checking out some IG posts. Okay. And <laughs> we are doing our uh, uh, top top three fave IG posts of the week. Uh, this week, Asian Diaspora Facts posted, uh, Did you know London is home to Europe's largest North Korean refugee diaspora? Most of them live in New Malden a suburb of southwest London. There are currently over 650 documented North Koreans in the UK, although that number might be closer to 1,000. I didn't know about this. And yeah. I visited New Baldwin. <laughs> yeah, so please check out Asian Diaspora Facts, man. You know, their research is on point always, mm. you know. Okay. All right, our next one here. Uh, let's do... This is one that I... Um, that I guess they started following us on the Asian All American magazine IG, and I clicked onto their to their um, profile. And dude, look how dope this is, man! I mean, uh, this is crushing the myth. Obviously, they're talking about uh, the model minority, the minority myth. Yeah, model minority myth. And friend of part, my dude. Yeah. Dude, I mean, they got some incredible content on here. Inspirational. Oh. Yeah, Steven Yuen. Uh, yeah, I mean, they got some. They're, they're reminding us how dope we are, and they're informing <laughs> us about how dope we are. They, they have, uh, this is another great find. Uh, please check them out, man. Mm. Uh, crushing the myth. Um, our next one is, this is uh, a post that you, um, that you found here, or... Yeah, a threat about right. something that has annoyed me for so many years. And you know what, to all my non-Asian partners and friends, yeah, that has Asian wide and Asian girlfriends, <laughs> they know what's up. It all, it kind of all starts out as a fetish. You know, I guess I don't want to put words in their mouth, so I'm not going to say that. But Asian uh, fetish fetishization is a real thing, man. Where was I? Uh, all these have caused issues, some more detrimental to Asians than others. Breach. Mm. Uh, Asian women, Asian men. Yeah. For sure, man. I get you. Yeah, You're now it's with K-pop, they are, and now with K-pop, they are also fetishizing Koreans. Koreans. Like, as if all Korean guys look like Jungkook. Yeah, man. I I definitely don't look like him. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so shout out to uh, Dear Asian Youth, man. Um, let's check out the profile, dude. Dear Asian Youth, thank you so much for posting that. And 
uh, why don't we go ahead and follow. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next episode.